welcome friends welcome to another video lecture of biovision academy and friends today we are going to discuss about x-ray crystallography simply you can call it x r d okay x-ray diffraction okay students x-ray crystallography is a technique which is used to determine the 3d image of biological molecules like protein dna and several other organic compounds okay students we have two techniques one is x-ray crystallography and another one is nmr which is used to determine the 3d structure of biological molecule okay generally when we use nmr then we use the liquid sample or you can say liquid form of the biological molecule you know that generally biological sample are present in liquid form okay but when we use x-ray crystallography then we use solid form that is the crystalline form of a biological sample this is the first difference second difference <coughs> nmr use the magnetic property of a nucleus to determine the structure of biological sample okay but in x-ray crystallography generally x-ray beam is used to determine the 3d structure of biological molecules okay friends so these are two differences between x-ray crystallography and nmr okay students the idea behind this discussion is i just want you to know about the nmr and xrd because these two techniques are used in the determination of the 3d image of the biological sample okay now let's understand what is x-ray crystallography and how it is used to determine the 3d image of the biological sample okay students in x-ray crystallography generally two things one is x-ray and another is the crystalline form of the biological sample are used okay so let's understand why we are using x-ray and why we are using crystal of a biological sample okay let's understand why we are using crystal why we are using crystal of a biological sample in x-ray crystallography okay students you know that generally biological samples are present in liquid form okay so when a biological sample present in liquid form then in that condition the bond angle is keep changing the position of the atoms keep changing and the conformation of the molecule is just not fixed it just keep changing at every moment so it is very hard to determine the structure of a biological molecule which are in motion it means they are in a liquid condition but if you change that biological sample in crystalline form okay and crystalline form is a solid form so in their solid form the position of the atom is fixed the conformation of the molecule is fixed and the protein sample or any other biological molecule is just fixed on a single place so it is very easy to determine the structure of that biological molecule which are fixed on a single plane rather than those compounds which are in a motion so that's why we are using crystal in x-ray crystallography okay the second point why we are using x-ray okay students you know that the wavelength of x-ray is 0.1 to 0.2 nanometer okay and the distance between two atoms is 0.1 to 0.3 nanometer okay or simply you can call it one angstrom okay you can observe that the wavelength of the x-ray and the distance between two atoms is nearly same okay now there is a question what is the meaning or what is the sense of this overall statement or uh, if i'm saying that the wavelength of the x-ray and the distance between two atoms is same okay let's understand this students you know that x-ray is a electromagnetic wave okay students generally x-ray is propagated in this manner okay it has one peak in upward direction and another peak in downward direction okay so the peak which is present in upward direction is known as crest and the peak which is present in downward direction is known as trough okay so the distance between 
two peaks it means the distance between two crest or the distance between two tuff is known as wavelength okay and you can observe that the wavelength is 0.1 to 0.2 nanometer which is equal to the distance between two atoms in a molecule that is 0.1 to 0.3 nanometer that's why when a x-ray beam incident on a crystal the x-ray beam are diffracted or you can say scattered okay now students one crest and one trough complete one wavelength okay and the distance between one crest and one trough is known as frequency okay friends so now you are able to understand what is wavelength and how it is related with the distance between two atoms and how this property is used in x-ray crystallography okay friends so student this is all about the x-ray and the crystal okay now students let's understand some more important point about the crystal okay students you know that every molecule is composed of several smallest particle okay and you consider that smallest particle as a crystal okay so you can say that crystal is the smallest possible particle of any molecule in which atoms are present on a regularly arranged manner okay so these are atoms which are present on different planes of a crystal in a regular manner okay now okay so if i'm saying that atoms are present on every surface of the crystal it means every crystal contain small fractions of the molecule okay just like this suppose that it is a crystal okay it means every surface contain a small fraction of the molecule just like this and molecule contain atoms and atom contains electrons okay so you can say that every surface of the crystal contain atoms which are regularly arranged okay so this is about the crystal students you can understand this uh, crystal like this suppose that it is a molecule okay it is a molecule and this molecule has a several layers okay suppose that this is a molecule it has three layers and every layer is composed of a smallest unit and you can call this smallest unit as a crystal suppose that this is the yellow crystal this is the red orange crystal this is the green crystal so every uh, molecule is contain is composed of several smallest unit and you can call these smallest unit as a crystal okay so the students now let's understand how the x-ray crystallography or xrd works okay let's understand this okay students generally when we perform x-ray crystallography then we use a x-ray source from which x-ray beam are emitted and a special type of support on which x-ray uh, sorry the biological crystal are placed okay the support is known as goniometer and goniometer has the property that it rotate the crystal on its axis okay we will understand this so students suppose that we have a x-ray source suppose that it is a x-ray source okay this is a x-ray source
दिस इज एक्सरे सोर्स ओके एंड दिस एक्सरे सोर्स इज नोन एज सिन क्रोटॉन इज नोन एज सिन क्रोटॉन okay and from this synchrotron x ray beam is emitted several x ray beam are emitted and that this x ray beam now incident on a lead screen suppose that it is a screen okay it is a screen on which x ray beam are incident okay this is a lead screen okay students now when several x ray beam incident on this lead screen then lead screen only allowed to pass a single x ray beam okay so from lead screen a single x ray beam is now able to cross the lead screen this is a single x ray beam okay got it now students this single x ray beam is now incident on a crystal it is incident on a crystal suppose that it is a crystal okay and as i told you this crystal is placed on a special type of support and that support is known as gonio meter is known as gonio meter okay now this gonio meter causes the rotation of this crystal in all direction so when x ray beam incident on this crystal then every surface is exposed to this x ray beam because the crystal is in rotation suppose that it is the crystal and this crystal is rotating it means as a, it is rotating so first time x ray beam incident on this surface that is yellow and this crystal is still keep rotating so next time when x ray beam coming now it is rotating it is incident on this red surface next time x ray beam incident the white surface and next time orange surface and next time on green surface it means due to rotation every surface is exposed to this x ray beam okay and you know that crystal contain repeating atoms so due to rotation and interaction with this x ray beam this crystal causes the diffraction of this x ray beam in different direction or you can say in different angles so after diffraction by the crystal this x ray beam incident on a x ray film this is x ray film okay this is x ray film so now this x ray beam incident with the different angles on this x ray film 
okay got it students now when this x-ray film with different angles incident on this x-ray film then they create spots they create spots on this x-ray film okay these are spots okay now students <coughs> x-ray beam created spots on this x-ray film okay and the spots are intense or light it means some spots have dark in appearance some spots are light in appearance okay some spots are large in size and some spots are small in size okay and this is occurred because every surface of the crystal have different atoms and when x-ray beam incident on this crystal then due to the rotation x-ray beam diffracted in different direction and due to different amount of atom the spots are <coughs> created with a different intensity okay students you know that atom contain cloud of electrons around the nucleus so x-ray beam interact with this with these electrons and the spots indicate the density of the electron okay suppose that if the spots are large and dark then it show high electron density high electron density or if the spots are small then it so low electron density okay so students by using the spot pattern or you can say by using the density of electrons and different angles of spots we create a electron density map we create a electron electron density map okay we create a electron density map by using a computer based mathematical software that is known as Fourier transformation that is known as Fourier transformation okay students Fourier transformation is a computer based mathematical tool which use the different angles of x-ray and intensity of spots and by using these two things it create a electron density map okay electron density map students tells about the position of position and number of electrons electrons on surface okay on surface and position of atom position of atom got it now students by using the number of electron and position of atoms we create a 3d image we generally create a 3d image okay we create the 3d image of the molecule of interest okay students by using electron density map map we just put our atoms or molecule in electron density you can understand this like this suppose that students these are some electrons which are Found on the x-ray film and now we put our atoms the 
by using electron density map in electrons so a 3d image is formed of the molecule okay students so by using electron fourier transformation we create a electron density map and in that electron density map we just put our atoms and we create the 3d image of the molecule okay friends so this is about the x-ray crystallography okay friends so i hope this overall discussion will help you to understand about the xrd okay friends we have understand why we are using x-ray x-ray beam why we are using crystal what is the difference between xrd and nmr okay friends so friends please share this video with your friends if you like this video uh, which i am sure you you do and please don't forget to press the bell icon so next time when we upload a new video you will get the notification okay friends so friends thank you very much for for your presence for hearing have a nice day